Hi everyone and welcome back to the White Change channel. Today I will share with you a remastered and updated video based on my previous webinar. This webinar is called Business Analysis, Outcomes and Deliverables. I'm Yulia Kasarenko, uh, the author of the book Business Analyst, A Profession and a Mindset. You can always find me on my website whydishchange.com or on this YouTube channel. And if you're interested in business analysis courses, uh, you can find some of my uh, self-paced video courses at this link, courses.whydishchange.com. Today, we are talking about business analysis outcomes and deliverables. Here is our agenda. We will start with what is the product of business analysis? Like, What are you supposed to deliver after you're done? What are the artifacts that are used to capture requirements? What deliverables would you be accountable for as a business analyst? What are the outcomes of that overall process? And where can you learn more? First of all, what is business analysis? Let's just do a quick reminder. Business analysis is a practice of analyzing organizations and their functions with the goal of identifying solutions to business problems and needs. So we start with a business problem. Someone identified a problem or a need. That problem needs to be analyzed. We need to understand why is it happening? What are the parts of it? What are the components of it? It helps us to visualize what solution will we need to solve this problem. We define that and that's how we are able to build the solution to the problem. So this process really is based on change. Business analysis captures the need of an organization to change. The organization has a certain current state. Uh, they have business process are running. They have products. They have customers. They have their operations. But there's maybe something wrong with it, something we want to change. So organization needs to move to a certain future state, a better state, the goal. And to get there, we need to change. We need to implement certain changes in an organization. So what we do during analysis, we analyze current state, we analyze the business problem that needs to be solved. We determine that future state. We try to understand it together with, with the stakeholders. What will be uh, the satisfactory solution to this problem? we determine what needs to change to get there like what's that gap what we will need to modify and the details of that change become business requirements this is what we are trying to understand and analyze and capture during business analysis process right so we start with our current state we analyze um, we call it sometimes as a state we break it down we capture it then we say, well, where do you want to be? Visualize problem resolved or need satisfied. This is your definition of the future state. And then how do you get from one to another? That's that gap. And the solution will allow to take us from current state to future state. So requirements are the components of the solution. They are features and capabilities needed to solve a business problem or satisfy a business need. So really, this is one of the products of business analysis. And this takes us to the question, where do business requirements come from? Do they come from business? Um, do you just go and gather them? And the reality is that requirements are a product of business analysis. They are not something you just collect and harvest. You start with information. You talk to the people who are experiencing a problem to gather information to understand what is happening. And then you need to apply business analysis process. There are certain activities you need to do with that information, just like, you know, maybe cooking those apples. And only then, as a result of this business analysis process, you're going to arrive at future state requirements. You know, maybe you want an apple salad, maybe you want an apple pie, or maybe you want a fancy bicolored apple. What are your future state requirements? You need to figure it out. And that's a process, right? And there are certain activities that need to be done. 
there is, by the way, another video I've recorded uh, called Understand Business Analysis Process, where we focus on this part here. Today, we will focus more on our outcomes and deliverables. And uh, one of these outcomes is definition of these requirements. What are the business requirements? So when we define requirements, think about it in terms of different layers because there are different types of requirements. Just as our business system has layers, when we change business system, we, we, we may need to change each layer. So your business system or your company will have layers starting with, you know, from the top with its strategy and business model and governance. How does this business work? How does it operate? What is its operating models? What are the policies and rules that govern day-to-day -day operations of that business? And then these um, policies and business rules are implemented through business processes, which are run by people and where we generate certain data that is used to exchange information. All of this uh, usually is implemented through certain systems and applications. Now, it may be technology, maybe also non-technology. Then there is certain technology infrastructure that these systems and applications will run on. And also we have physical environment, right? Businesses will have locations, materials, equipment, and so on. So when we need to implement a change from current state to future state, there may be changes at each of these layers. And this is what we need to figure out during business analysis, what needs to change. If we have some changes at the highest level, maybe we have some strategic requirements that need to be a part of our solution. We usually have some functional requirements that focus on what are the changes to the rules, to processes, to what people do, to the data that is um, created as a result of these activities. Uh, whenever we have systems and applications as part of our solution, we also think about non-functional requirements um, that characterize these systems. Maybe some technical requirements related to infrastructure and some implementation requirements that explain how this changes. So think about it this way. Strategic requirements could include strategic objectives, regulator requirements, compliance requirements, functional requirements. And this is what the bulk of business anal analysts work is uh, focused on is required capabilities and behavior of the solution. Non-functional requirements are required qualities of the solution and constraints. And we will, we will touch on in more detail what does it mean. Maybe we have some technology infrastructure requirements and things related to what equipment you need. Do you need new materials? How the, the supply chain changes? Transition requirements, change management tasks. So lots of requirements that are just related to implementation of our new solutions. So when we do business analysis activities, we need to think about all these diff different types of requirements and capture them. And that's part of our deliverables. Let's look at them in more detail now. Functional requirements. Uh, there are many uh, ways to capture functional requirements, but we focus on a few things. First of all, we focus on processes or workflows. What are the current processes? Do they need to change? What needs to change? And then it becomes process requirements. Stakeholder access. We may have different types of users that need access to different features of the solution or the different data what is it that they need a user interface how will users need to interface with these solutions what information they need to access or enter what do they need to receive back that becomes foundation for user interface requirements usability requirements and you know this is a little bit of a hybrid with functional and functional but uh, it really relates to the ease of use and thinking about users of different abilities Data and information management. So here is where we think about the data that needs to be created and modified and retained and processed. Maybe some analytics that is required. Reporting, uh, any type of solution usually includes some reporting requirements because otherwise you don't know how things have changed and are you doing any better? What performance indicators changes you can observe? 
audit requirements and this is sometimes what may get forgotten a little bit but we may need to be able to audit certain activities within the system or access to data or we may need to uh, monitor um, frequency or um, the roles of people who are taking making certain decisions and to audit whether um, that satisfies all of the rules and policies business rules themselves uh, may guide the functionality of our system maybe calculation rules maybe derivation or rules driven by policies or even external legislation risk management fraud prevention so different different groups of functional requirements that need to be reflected on in your solution now um, if we talk in terms of deliverables like what is it gonna look like and how you may reflect these functional requirements other than text we, we all understand that we, we can use text and language to capture these things but there is more to it than that right for example if you look at different requirements artifacts uh definitely we use diagrams and models to capture requirements for example we may use a use case diagram to capture the main use cases what my different types of users will use the solution for so my customer is going to create the profile view menu place order and change order right and my um, service representative should be able to help the customer do those things as well and they can also monitor and view order statuses and so on so a, a model just helps us depict some of our findings of this requirements process there is a separate video i have on the uh, picture speak uh, playlist called how to create use case diagrams and i will provide you with a link to that here is another artifact user story map so uh, this helps us to break down the user journey into steps activities and an individual user story so it helps to see the big picture um, say my persona my um, customer wants to um, change uh, the uh, delivery uh, of their order or maybe my customer wants to make a new payment and then I, I will look at what steps are required and what activities are required to do that this could be an outcome of business analysis a user story map that helps everyone to see both the big picture and then how individual user stories fit in and you can even use that user story map to do some release planning a product backlog if we are working uh, in a uh, you know in an agile team and we use product backlog to capture requirements as user stories you will have a backlog which is essentially is you know a list or a stack of user stories that eventually bubble up to the top and uh, this backlog is going to be sorted by priority the user stories at the very bottom will have lowest priority and the user stories at the top will have highest priority and this will determine um, the planning of next iterations and then the details with which each user story is captured so here are my user stories at the very top are well groomed and well defined and they perhaps will be developed next right so um another way to look at it is imagine you have a backlog of requirements that still need to be done and then certain requirements out of that backlog are selected and groomed for current sprint and then also once they're done they're pushed to the done site so so this is another visual or you know sometimes agile teams use it and put it on a big board to help them plan what's happening with the iterations which requirements or user stories are done which are coming up next and which are sitting in the backlog right so that's your product backlog the user stories themselves that may be used to capture requirements also are you know the the outcomes and um, regardless of what tool you use to capture user stories you still follow certain structures so you may have uh, some major themes uh, for your product for example customer experience theme and then epics which really like are groups of user stories and then you define user stories and requirements so in uh, here's an example right maybe you have an epic that describes place and customer orders 
and there may be a user story that says as a customer i want to create my order online so that i don't have to call anybody uh, user stories follow a specific format while well, i'm not going into this in detail you can definitely look it up online but this is a typical format of a user story as a customer i want to do this so that i can you know satisfy my needs or achieve my goals as a customer i want a notification if my delivery is going to be late so that i know when to expect it and so on so we may be capturing requirements as user stories grouping it into epics and themes and then they will be sitting in my product backlog and um, this structuring will make me easy will help me to find them and will make sense of this backlog another example of a requirement artifact is a process flow diagram or in this case it's a swim lane diagram if i have a business process that i need to analyze and perhaps modify in some way um, it's a good idea to have it visualized create a process flow which depicts the roles like who is participating in the process certain activities and the sequence in which they happen and what conditions may direct the flow of the process and then you may be capturing what activities need to change for example is my maybe i need a two or three user stories that will map to this activity review the manuscript or maybe i'm not going to change the process of reviewing the manuscript but we need to modify proofreading manuscript steps so you can always link your requirements or your user stories to your diagrams to help visualize what exactly is the change that's required. So that's another artifact of requirements management process. Scenario matrix uh, is another example where you may have different scenarios for your, in this case, for your customers that depend on certain factors in my case imagine my scenarios relate to customers placing orders and uh, the scenario may depend on what is the type of customer time of day or a channel a user access matrix may determine what user roles should have access to what functionality or to what data in the system and this can be very simple or very granular um, it depends again on the needs and complexity of your system but you know you know even in the simplest way imagine you have different groups of data or functionality such as what is order status what is payment status what is inventory of a product and then which users are interested in each of these groups of data or functionality and that will help you define different user roles because we do want to give different users access to what they need and we don't want to give them access to what they don't need so this helps us capture that at the requirements phase wireframes help us create a visual representation of, of that user experience anytime you need to design certain user interface or you want to give your users of your solution ability to see things or interact with the solution you need some kind of an interface whether it's a screen whether it's a screen in an app or a, you know it could be even a report or maybe an email how should information be arranged right that's really a wireframe so in this example maybe it's a wireframe for a, a web page uh, which will, will have areas for logo and heading and search and you visualizing what what is the content maybe as a customer i want to see my order status and dashboard of my orders and latest messages and feed of some notifications so this could be really anything and i know you've all seen and you are used to the design of different websites and systems and you can think of it but again as part of business analysis we do need to sometimes create those wireframes even if it's just to help us continue with analysis and to help us clarify the requirements for each of these understand perhaps data requirements or the flow of user experience of what steps need to happen one after another what information is most important for the customer or for whoever will be using this and so on so from wireframes let's move on um, decision tree is another example decision trees are uh, can be used to capture uh, business rules 
uh, complex conditions, for example. So in this case, here is a decision tree that helps me to determine how to calculate order discount based on certain criteria. So I have my customer new or returning. I know what's the size of the order, whether they're placing the order in advance, whether the customer in, is in good standing. And um, if I were trying to use text to describe all of these rules, I may get lost, I may get confused, I may miss things. Decision trees help us to capture that logic in a structured way and in a visual way, and it will also help us to see if we're missing any conditions. So decision trees are very, very helpful. Um, I won't try to explain it in a lot of detail right now. However, I again, I do have another video called How to Create a Decision Tree. I'll post the link in the description and you're welcome to jump on it and have a look if you'd like to learn how to create decision trees. This is, by the way, one of my favorite uh, techniques. A fishbone diagram can be used for root cause analysis. Here's another potential artifact. And especially if you have a complex business problem that may have multiple causes, um, this is a, a method of capturing those causes and contributors to those causes and then maybe determining which ones to tackle. So this is just an example again. Um, in, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll point you back to my website and where you can find some downloads and handouts to help you with that. And of course, this is not all. There are many other business analysis artifacts that you may create as a result of business analysis process and to help you articulate requirements, validate requirements and capture requirements. So here are a few more examples. Data dictionary. It, it isn't always created by a business analyst, but sometimes it is. And if data dictionary doesn't exist, you may be in a good position to create it or at least start it. Data flow diagrams. You may be on working on a project where data flows play a significant role, or perhaps integrations, and you may want to depict that. Data models. Again, depending on what you work on, some business analysts work on data warehousing projects, or analytics projects where data models become really, really important. Uh, you may have a data architect, a data modeler, but if you don't, again, sometimes you end up playing a little bit of a dual role. Sequence diagrams, less frequent. It's more probably done by system analysts, but again, it all depends on what your role is and what your skills are and what the needs of the project are. State charts, also another very good tool, and of course, more. For more information, especially as it relates to data and data analysis, um, check out a video called What Business Analysts Need to Know About Data. This is where I go in a little bit more detail about data dictionaries, data flows, data models, and so on. I'll post the link in the description. Let's now talk about non-functional requirements. We mentioned them in the beginning. Non-functional requirements focus on the um, quality of the solution itself. And again, there are many aspects to it. There are many types of non-functional requirements. Availability means uh, when is your solution um, needs to be available. For example, should it be available 24 seven or not? If you're doing online banking, for example, you probably want that to be available at any time. But maybe if you are in a customer service, um, maybe your customer service all, all, all needs to be available at a certain time of the day. Capacity, scalability, uh, especially as it pertains to, to technology, to computer systems, how much um, capacity should the system have? Um, will it be able to grow? For example, what if your company grows and the volume of data grows and the volume of transaction grows? How much growth um, should your system be able to absorb? Performance, which relates, for example, to speed of execution. So if you are trading stock, you need a really, really fast response from your system. If you are ordering something online, you want the mm, application to respond to you quickly. Otherwise, you may just change your mind and go to competitors. Robustness relates to, um, you know, how robust, how resilient the system is. So imagine you are 
your product is um, perhaps a tablet that someone wants to use outside in different weather. So you may need some robustness requirements related to functionality of that Padlet itself, the hardware. Uh, flexibility, localization, so localization uh, as it relates to different markets, countries, languages, legislation, compatibility, say with web browsers or with some other technology, integration requirements, does your solution need to integrate to other systems, what are the, the integration methods and, and, and modes that are required, maintenance and support, what happens if something goes wrong, who can who will support it, how quickly issues need to be resolved, and security, of course. So uh, we could spend a lot of time just talking about non-functional requirements, of course. Definitely um, look up more in books, in articles, if you'd like to learn more. For now, this is just a review for you, just to remind you that all of these are also deliverables of business analysis. It's not just functional, non-functional requirements are also important, okay? So what are those business analysis deliverables? It's artifacts that structure and capture the requirements. So we just re reviewed a few. Business requirement document or a backlog with user stories, diagrams, scenario matrices, descriptions of user roles, non-functional requirements. So these are all deliverables. Pictures, models, and diagrams that clarify and illustrate and organize things. Definitely the visual components are important. User acceptance criteria. And the most important deliverable, the most important deliverable for you would be also shared understanding of requirements. Now, why do you need that shared understanding and what else do you do with business requirements, right? You don't just create business requirements, you know, for the sake of having a document. You're going to use it through your whole project, right? So first of all, uh, business requirements will help define the design of the solution. We design the solution based on requirements. What do we need to achieve? So, um, it will help define the functional design. Uh, the outcomes could be different, again, based on methodologies used. It could be functional design document, system specification, solution design document. So you may encounter these different terms, but it is defined by business requirements. So this is, this is the foundation of the solution design. Okay? Then business requirements also drive testing. So they determine what is the test um, strategy that needs to be taken. What are the different test scenarios that you need to test? And think about the scenario matrix we created during the requirements phase. Now that can be foundation to create test scenarios, test cases, satisfaction criteria. So our business requirements determine what needs to be tested. What is the expected behavior? And finally, business requirements help direct the implementation activities, communication and training, system user guide, training manual, materials. Often, uh, the better is your requirements documentation, the easier it will be to create this change management communication. Often, what we create here, our diagrams and presentations, can be very easily translated into these artifacts used for communication and training and user adoption. So definitely, you don't just do requirements for the sake of requirements. That's a foundation for the whole project and for design of the solution. And again, the most important outcome of business analysis is not just those artifacts, not just those diagrams. It's shared understanding of business requirements by all stakeholders. So this is one of the key messages for today, even though our focus is on outcomes and deliverables, don't think of them just in terms of physical deliverables or electronic deliverables. It's not just digital documents. It's not just diagrams and PDFs. It's not just wireframes and prototypes, even though all of that is very important. 
But another important outcome of business analysis is creating that shared understanding. So if you have a team of your stakeholders and designers and architects and QA leads and business analysts and whoever else is on your project, your goal is to make sure that all of them agree on what are they building, right? They agree on the understanding of business requirements. So now that we've agreed on this important point, how do you achieve that shared understanding of requirements? And this is where we go back to human nature. People um, differ in how they absorb information. They differ in how they understand information. So when we process um, uh, the information we received during the discovery, when we are doing our analysis activities, when we synthesize, these requirements and requirement artifacts. We need to keep in mind that we need to cater to, to different needs. And as you see in this picture, we may have stakeholders from different groups that just need information in different ways. Someone wants this to be explained to them, maybe one-on-one. -on -one. Someone likes to see the data. They understand the data much better. Someone likes a group discussion. This is how they uh, achieve a better understanding by hearing everybody else talking about it. Someone, and I'm probably one of those people, wants to see a diagram because it helps them visualize. Someone wants to show the demos or prototypes or wireframes or see some examples. And some people just prefer to read, right? They just say, leave me alone. I want to read it, the whole thing myself. Then I will know whether I understand it and whether they agree. And someone wants to see the comparison, what we have now versus what is it going to be like in the future. So you may encounter all of these people on your project and you need to cater to them. So business analyst needs to understand um, how to deliver the message to everyone. For example, business analyst may um, think of a requirement. We need to distinguish between a customer and multiple customer contacts. It's just text and maybe you know what you mean, but maybe I want to see it in a diagram and someone else wants to see an example. So our job as business analysts is to help everyone achieve that shared understanding by giving them information in more than one way. And you know, this is what I call explain many times, many ways. How do we do that? How do we explain it many ways? by using different techniques, by using these different artifacts. So we, we talked about some of them earlier, and there are of course many more, but depending on what type of um, processing you need to, to really understand the information better, we may use prototypes or mockups or storyboards for people who want to see things. We may want to do role play or recap for someone who wants the same information explained to them multiple times in different ways. We wanna provide data and, and analytics uh, to someone who understands the data and wants to compare the data. We can do group reviews or individual reviews, um, do walkthroughs, um, do some other diagrams, um, individual reviews with some people someone will understand that when it's expressed as a test case and so on. And of course, there are people who just want text, right? They just want to read for themselves and process and maybe do their own diagram for themselves. So that's why we need different techniques, not only because we have different types of projects, but also because we have different type of people involved and they need information in different ways. And this is one of those crucial ways of achieving a shared understanding. And that leads me to highlighting what I want to highlight at the end of this video is that when we build requirements, we need to try to make them rich requirements. Don't just focus on text, a huge business requirements document or a backlog with 300 user stories all written in the same format because it becomes monotonous and repetitive and it becomes hard to read. We'll start to lose track. Use complementary artifacts uh, to make your requirements rich. Use a process flow diagram and a scenario matrix and a use case diagram and another diagram and use them to complement the text, right? Because it just 
helps you understand the textual part much better. And it's not just requirement documents where you can insert diagrams and other visuals. You can attach them to your backlogs, to your user stories, right? Don't think that if you are using a backlog on an agile team, you don't need to do diagrams anymore. That's not true. You can link your user stories to diagrams. You can link multiple user stories to the same diagram to a map and reflect that you need multiple user stories to just implement a, a change in a certain process, right? You can link your user stories to the matrices and storyboards and mockups. And again, it makes your backlog richer and easier to understand, and it helps you to make more quality and more complete requirements. So that leads me to just asking you, what is in your business analysis portfolio? Now, you may ask, what is business analysis portfolio, right? So as a business analyst, especially if you're thinking of changing careers, you should be able to demonstrate what you can do, right? And actually, for business analysts, it's pretty easy. Look at all of those artifacts we just discussed. Look at all of those examples of diagrams and matrices and so on. You can have them as examples of what you can do in your business analysis portfolio. And when you go to an interview or when you are discussing a potential promotion, you can use those examples to show your abilities, right? So go back to this webinar, look at all those individual uh, pages with examples and boxes. Can you create one of those? Do you know how? Research them and create some examples. They can be just hypothetical examples. But first, you will be learning. You will have those skills at hand. And second, you will have examples that and maybe it will help you to move your career forward or get that job or just get that edge at an interview. Okay. So remember, don't tell me, show me in an interview. Don't just tell me, okay, I know how to do process flow diagrams. Show me an example. That always works better. And you, you never know, your interviewer may be a visual person, right? And they will appreciate an illustration. If you want to learn more about how to create different requirements, artifacts, different diagrams, I've already shared lots of links with you to other videos. I also have some video courses that you can enroll in and mm, you, uh, basically learn as at your own pace. You can go to courses.yhange.com and um, just uh, just explore the options there. You can also go uh, and I have some downloads, uh, shop.yhange.com, uh, some handouts, downloads that you can use yourself to make your requirements richer and um, to have this rich assortment of requirements artifacts at your disposal. That's it for today. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Please uh, remember rich requirements are always better than just plain text or just the backlog with user stories. Always think about those different stakeholders that may process information in a different way. Try to present requirements to them for validation and review in different formats to help create that shared understanding of requirements, which is the, the main outcome of business analysis. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. And until next time, take care.